Hey there, I wanted to just talk a little bit about uh, this high voltage rig that I put together for the latest video and uh, how it's put together. So I got some help from the SEM manufacturer uh, in designing some of the high voltage uh, circuitry, but um, I, I did some of the final assembly and, and uh, I thought I'd do a little walkthrough here. So on the bottom here is a high voltage supply and this goes up to, I believe 25 kilovolts is the max here. Um, oh no, 30. 30. Uh, and this is the high voltage output here, uh, which goes into, <laughs> this is just like a uh, plastic test tube uh, with some, some kept on tape here. And then uh, it's, um, it's potted inside some, some insulation like epoxy. Uh, and then there's some uh, high voltage resistors in there to limit the amount of current flow. So that this is a little less dangerous. Uh, still, <laughs> it's still pretty gnarly, but um, we tried to make it as safe as possible, particularly since I wasn't going to be operating it just here in a controlled environment in the shop, but I was actually going to take it out on the road into the field. Uh, and then this terminal over here is the ground terminal. And I've actually got two things hooked up to that. I've got the green wire here, which goes to my benchtop power supply in this setup. And then uh, I've got this wire here, which actually goes to the other electrode over here. And I've got a little just bit of gaff tape on that because I was holding up a a background because the, the uh, sun was really bright in one of the setups. And then, let's see, let's see if we can pull this apart here. Um, uh, pull some of this out. Um, one here. Two and a half, maybe? So, this round wire just screws onto the end, and I actually this is a block of nylon that I machined somewhat poorly, so it's not quite straight, but it's good enough. And then it's got on this side over here, it's got a set screw, and that controls this moving in and out. And uh, this, let's see. so this has got a, I built this acrylic enclosure. This is my first time working with acrylic, um, which was an experience. Uh, using acrylic glue, you weld on four is the, the glue of choice. And uh, you have to have really, really straight edges. So I use my router and a router bit. I cut them on a jigsaw and then I use my router to get them really, really straight with a straight edge. And that, that was uh, um, very time consuming and super messy. Uh, I just had shavings all over me. So this is the arm. It's just got a, a piece of all thread that runs all the way through it from this side to this side. And then these aluminum balls, I think are for flag snaps. I got them off McMaster car and they just, just screw on the ends here. And they give us a nice smooth surface to run arcs from. You can actually see there's, uh, there's definitely some, uh, some residue there from all the arcing. And then, I don't know what this, that shouldn't be related. Uh, so those just screw on there. And then I built for the pointy part of the demo and just took a, uh, a nail and drilled a hole and, uh, and, and put the nail in. And I found that it, it got loose. So what I did is I, I um, mushroomed over the base of the nail uh, on uh, the anvil with a with a ball peen hammer so that it kind of got, got wedged in there, if that makes sense. And, uh, and then the other side of this is, this is a block of aluminum, and this section here has no metal in it. So we're really trying to insulate it well from anything that's grounded, you know, the case here or any of that, because we didn't want any straight arcs, particularly through me. Um, that's the most important part. And then there's just another piece of all thread here. Let's screw this. So this is just another section of all thread and uh, it comes out this side and then there, this is just wedged in here. And, uh, that's got, this is one of the ends of the current limiting resistor and that just pokes into a little flat spot that I carved out on the, on the all thread here. Just like so. So, and then, you know, this has got, manufacturer put this together, but this has got, I don't know, some sort of 3D printed cover, but this is a, a special high voltage cable here. Um, for that. On this side, this is a micrometer stage. 
And uh, so it's got, it's got a micrometer measurement here that gives us, I think it's, uh, what is it? I think it's one full millimeter per turn. And then it's broken up into divisions and that, so that allows me to get pretty fine measurement. This is just a lock knob, which I haven't really used. And then um, I 3D printed, they had designed a bracket here and I modified it and just 3D printed it to hold to hold this here. And that just bolts onto the stage here. It has a whole bunch of bolt holes. And then it's all just mounted on a, a block of, uh, of nylon. And this has got a bolt that comes up through it and then the, the acrylic bolts onto that. In terms of control circuitry, there's some sort of proprietary uh, interface here on this end. And uh, this has got a whole bunch of pins and wires that come out. And they did this wiring up. This has got some, it's got a number of wires going into it, but I think the way it works is it's got sort of an on off voltage and it's, it's all low voltage coming in and out of this connector here. Get that into frame. So it's all, all low voltage coming in and out of this connector here. And so I think it's probably, uh, there is an on off switch here that sends a little bit of voltage in and then there's, uh, there's um, a, a potentiometer. Um, I think it probably got a voltage divider set up here um, just to give it like, you know, zero to 10 volts to give it zero to 30 kV to tell it to output zero to 30 kV. And then there's two sets of sensing wires that come into just these cheap multimeters here. And so those are just run off, you know, the batteries in the multimeters and those give the, the voltage readout and the current readout. And they've got a weird scale, you know, it's 0.33 volts per kilovolt. And so I just did the math off of that to calculate what I was running at. And, uh, and then the LED here just to indicate whether it's, it's on or off. This takes, 24 volts in, but low current, just a couple hundred milliamps. So um, that was convenient because it allowed me to run it off of uh, batteries. So I've got two, where are they? Hang on. So I've got two of these. These are uh, sealed lead acid batteries, uh, 12 volts, seven amp hours. Uh, these are for motorcycles. And I had them for the little uh, spare parts presence robot that I built on on Twitch a while ago and uh, and so I just wired two of them in series they got me 24 volts and they lasted long enough for me to, to shoot everything you've seen in the video um, on the bench here I've just been using my I've just been using I've been using my fancy key site power supply and I'm gonna unplug these here uh, or at least unplug positive just so I yeah we're probably fine but uh, I don't want to accidentally start this up with it all in pieces, but um, let's see. fire this up here. And so this just allowed me to uh, to output 24 volts and do current limiting, particularly when I was still testing this. It was nice to have some current limiting. This thing is super fancy and, uh, and Keysight actually um, gave it to me to outfit the shop along with a really nice oscilloscope. So I'm very thankful to them. Uh, and it's honestly, it's been awesome. So I can, uh, I can store and recall settings here. And, uh, and so, you know, I've been using this pretty simply so far, but, uh, but just 24 volts and then I limited it to 500 milliamps, half an amp. Um, and that allowed me to turn it on and off. And then I've got my, uh, my negative tied to ground here. And then that goes into the, the grounded wall plug. So I don't know, there's, there was some back and forth as to whether we really wanted to ground this to earth or not, particularly out in the field. I, I drove that, that uh, grounding rod, that, that uh, copper grounding rod into the ground. And, you know, it's kind of debatable as to whether it's safer to leave it isolated or let there be, you know, a, a path to ground. Because the, the, the danger is that if I'm then grounded to earth, there's a possibility that high voltage might go through me to get to earth. But uh, I think we decided that it was, you know, six one, half dozen the other. And uh, I, I felt better knowing at least that that we had known, known ground references um, everywhere we were using it. I don't know if that's the right decision. I'm not a high voltage guy. Um, so this has all been a little bit scary, to be honest. Um, uh, in operating this thing, um, when I was first doing it uh, in particular and you know making changes and stuff, 
I had someone come down to the shop so that I wasn't here alone in case in case I had any issues. Um, you know, the real danger is that you you get shocked and have a heart attack, and so um, you wouldn't want to do that while you're alone. Um, the other thing I did is uh, really make sure that when when I was running anything or there was any danger of high voltage, to make sure that I was only working with one hand. And that's why you see me, I think you see me in the video, I've got one hand in my back pocket, and that's a safety thing. So that there's no chance that I've got two hands on things and have a, a circuit that goes through one arm and comes out the other and goes across my heart. Whereas if I only have one hand, it's much harder to touch both high voltage and ground at the same time. Um, but the more I worked with this, the more I became convinced that we did a pretty good job insulating everything and that there wasn't a lot of, a lot of risk of that. So, um, it got to the point where I was, you know, I was shooting the last little pickups and stuff and I was working on my own. So anyway, I, I thought it'd be fun to just go through a little bit of the basics there and explain this. This is kind of a, this is a much more casual video than I normally do. Um, I'm just shooting it on my cell phone. So, um, I thought it would be nice to just get something out quick and, and, uh, for those that are interested, you can, uh, learn a little bit more about this setup. Um, yeah, if you haven't watched the, the high voltage video, go watch that. And uh, yeah, hopefully there'll they'll be a part two here. If you aren't already, um, please uh, join us on the Discord. Um, we got a really nice group of folks there. And um, yeah, uh, people are talking about all sorts of projects, not just my projects, but their projects. So come join us. There's all sorts of interesting stuff going on. Take care, I'll talk to you again soon.